All right, guys, today we are doing a carburetor on a Titan 7000 generator. A commercial generator. Um, it's got the uh, 11 horsepower Robin Subaru EH34 on it. It's a older, a little older deal. Where the outlets on this thing from? Come on. Oh, they're right on the generator pack. Okay. All right, guys. So the first thing we're gonna go ahead and do uh, is pull. I don't want to get this out. There we go. Let's pull the uh, air filter cover off. Oh, let me get a flathead screwdriver or something in that one. It's down good. Then we've got. Uh, three 10 millimeter uh, so, uh, one bolt and two nuts they're all 10 millimeter we're gonna take those out all right so there's a tube that goes right in here it just pulls right off no big deal all right looks like we're gonna have to remove oh no look at that all right all right so uh take off the fuel line this will pull straight out no big deal just take this fuel line off you got a container ready to catch the gas um, I drain every bit of gas out of the tank and clean the tank every time I do a carburetor if there's any water or any dirt in this it's going to you know clog your carburetor back up again so all right well we're letting that drain I'm gonna pull this back should come straight back there we go So there's an S turn on this. It appears that when you pull this straight back, it should come right on out. Oh, right out of the, it, it just turns right out of it. And there's a spring on there and everything, so just be careful. But uh, yeah, the S turn just turns right on out when you pull it out. No big deal. There's a gasket in the back. Make sure that stays there. If you tear this, you need to get a new one. Um, I don't think we're gonna. I'm gonna look and see if I can find this. If I can find this carburetor, um, I'll put it on uh, in the description below. I might be able to actually find this one. I think I even have one of these brand new in my drawer, so it might be able to find this. So if I can find it, I'll put it in the description below. Um, but. Uh, I'll see if I can find the gaskets too, but just tr be careful. Try not to mess it up. If it stays on the carburetor, leave it right on the carburetor. Look at all that tar. Yeah, I wonder what's wrong with this thing. <laughs> She's gonna be slap full of gum. All right, so what is this? Let me see. Thirteen millimeter. We're gonna take this bolt right here off. This bowl may not come off easy. If it doesn't, just tap it a few times. It'll pop right off. Um, too horrible in there. I thought, sure, this thing would be full of tar. All right. Actually, looks pretty clean. I'm surprised it didn't run. All right, we're going to pull this pin right here out. I'm going to slide right out. And then you can get the float off of it. Pull this out, be careful. It's got a needle valve on it. Don't lose that. Keep it in a safe spot. All right. So we got the main jet right down in there. It looks clean. Not a big deal at all, actually. So we're gonna go ahead and reach in there with a the flathead screwdriver and pull that jet out. I take a number two screwdriver and I grind the sides down on it. This is my jet removing screwdriver. That way it fits right down in. You know, the normal screwdriver won't fit down in. It's too wide, you know. Um, this is the trick. So this is 14 karat testing solution. 
is an acid, GT44. So this is an acid. So if you get this on your hands, it'll burn your skin. If you get it in your eyes, it'll burn your eyes out. Wear safety glasses, wear gloves. It'll be the green top one. I've tried all of them. Some of them will eat the brass, some of them will eat the aluminum. This is the only one that works properly. Don't try other stuff thinking it's going to be better or anything like that. It's not. I've tried all of them. Um, I'll put this in the description below. Be very safe. If you get this in your eyes, just rinse it out with water. You'll be fine. Get it on your skin, just rinse it off with water. You'll be fine. Don't panic. Just be smart. Keep a bottle of water next to you. It'll rinse right out instantly all right guys so it doesn't take a lot either it takes a drop or two and that bugger's bubbling out look at that it'll be a brand new jet don't put any in this hole here go up in here do a couple drops in there we'll bubble out the orifice tube and then we're going to flip this on its side and then we got this hole here a couple drops in there and a couple drops in this hole over here. Those are your idle circuits. We're going to let them bubble and boil. Oh. Once it stops, you slowly rinse it off with carb cleaner. An eye on your container. This thing must have had a full tank of gas in it. It's getting closer. I got to dump that out. Um, so just slowly rinse. So that you don't get any splash back. And then you're going to pick this up with your hands and really spray through it. Just make sure it's good and clear. Same with this. Spray through all the holes. Alright, so once you got this all rinsed out, so the jet looks nice and brand new. Um, you spray through this really well make sure that's good and clean don't get anything in that because it'll etch it out and then it'll never seal um, you see I left the bowl gasket on there don't mess with that at all just leave it in there um, anything any of those seals like if I pulled that bowl gasket out it would swell right up um, and then uh, through these two main holes here they're nice and clean make sure everything sprays through you know and, this is good and rinsed out. If you gotta do acid a couple times, do it a couple times. Make sure you got your float nice and rinsed off and clean. Um, the needle valve, I usually take and rub on my pants in a circular motion to make sure that there's no debris on it. Make sure it's good and shiny and smooth. If it's swollen or cracked, it's gonna leak. And then make sure you rinse off this whole float really well. And then we're going to reinstall this, being careful to not lose the needle valve. We're going to get the needle valve to stab right down in the hole. And then you're going to put the pin, rinsed out, and make sure that that's good and clean. You're going to shove it back through everything. side's got a flat side on it that will not go through the side that's round goes through there we go we got that all in place clean the bowl out really well and then I put that back on once you're done cleaning it out Sure the bowl bolts good and clean I just rub it off on my jeans you can see the, the rust stain where I rubbed it off before and it gets it nice and clean um, this is uh, this bolt this uh, washer's got a rubber seal on it I don't I just I just leave it right on the bolt because every time you mess with something the seal swells or cracks so you don't want to do any of that get that on tighten it down an experienced mechanic can forget something. I forgot that jet. That's important. This will never run without that jet in there. So we're going to put that back in, tighten it down. 
and put the bowl on, tighten it down. Jesus. All right, so we're going to get this uh, arm over where we can get it to stab on this, on this guy here. So we're going to start this in place, get this lined up. We can move this over at the same time. So we're going to move this arm over and line this up at the same time. And when we get it stabbed in there, then we'll just push this back and it'll work its way in. We got it started. We're going to push it back. It works its way in. And then we're going to bring this spring. It's all tangled up now. Get it back. And we're going to put the spring through this hole too. I'm going to get it go through that hole at the same time. That spring just helps to keep it from surging. Make sure everything's moving freely. Good. All right, and we're still just waiting for this guy to finish straining out. I've already emptied it once. I mean, how much gas does this thing hold? Dear Lord. It's getting there. So I'm going to go ahead and put pause and wait for this thing to stop draining. Hours later, it's finally done draining. So just reconnect the fuel line, hook it back up, put the clamp back on, push this back in place. This should be going all the way back. It's hitting some. Stopping this from going all the way back. What's going on here? Oh, there was an extra 10 millimeter bolt that I didn't even know that was back here. All right, so we're going to loosen this guy up then. So there's a 10 millimeter bolt. Oh, there we go. And then it's got the ground. It's got a ground on it. Where the heck we go? There it is. All right, so there's a ground wire on it. Get it in place. It must have been loose. I need two hands for that. All right, so then back, just I got it finger tight. It's not tight, tight. The way this thing hooks down. Uh, the tank, I just used air and I blew it through till it was all blown through and there was no uh, water dust in it at all. We're gonna go ahead and stab this hose into place on there um, and then get it lined up on here. So, and then uh, two 10 millimeter nuts with 10 millimeter bolts. Get it all on. Um, you're gonna wanna make sure your air filter is good and blown out and dust free. Set it in place with a canister, pop it all together, and that's it. All right, so they use these motors on um, um, snow blowers and everything. So I'll, I'll put that in the description, the model number of this motor and everything. Um, it's pretty easy. All the parts will be in the description that I, I, you could ever need for this. The acid that I use will be in the description. It's got the green top. You're gonna, I can do 50 carburetors with one of these bottles. Um, I buy them by the dozen. We go through them. It, you know, it takes us four months to go through a dozen of them. You know, and we're, I mean, we do a lot of, a lot of carburetors every day. All right, this helped you out in any way, shape, or form. Give me a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. Uh, all the parts will be in the description. Today's T-shirt. It'll be in the description as well. If you want to sponsor me, message me. Peace.